Finnish Greencast will uh, uh, talk about the unique factorization uh, theorem, which we will also need for uh, Gödel numbers. So the theorem uh, states that uh, every positive uh, integer or natural number greater than 1 is either prime or can be written as a product of primes. And um, in addition, this uh, factorization is unique. except for the order of the prime factors. In other words, we can uh, arrange those uh, prime factors in any whichever way we want in the product, um, but uh, the prime factors will remain the same. So uh, this is a unique uh, factorization theorem. Uh, this is also known as the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Uh, sometimes it is stated every positive integer greater than 1 has a unique prime factorization. And, uh, so here's an example. 2 uh, is 2. So 3 is 3. Those are primes. They have themselves as uh, prime factorizations. 4 is 2 times 2. Um, then 5 is 5. Uh, it's a prime number. 6 is 2 times 3. Uh, 7 is uh, 7. 8 is uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Uh, so 2 to the third. 10 is uh, 2 times 5, 2 to the first times 5 to the first. And um, so we can rearrange it as 5 times 2, but it doesn't change the uniqueness of the prime factors. Uh, 12 is uh, 2 times 2 to the, se uh, two, uh, two to the second uh, times uh, 3, and 120 uh, is equal to uh, 2 to the fourth times uh, 3 times uh, 5 to uh, the second. So um, once we have a, a unique prime factorization, so for example, uh, 1,200 uh, is equal to 2 to the fourth time, times uh, 3 to the first times 5 to the second. So we can uh, actually uh, conclude that any divisor of uh, uh, the number, in this case it's 1,200, um, has um, uh, the form of um, 2 to the x times uh, 3 uh, to the y uh, times uh, 5 uh, to the z uh, where x is in this closed interval uh, from 0 to uh, 4 uh, y uh, uh, is in the interval from 0 uh, to 1 and then Z is in the interval from 0 to 2, so, and we can, uh, this fact is frequently used in uh, cryptograph uh, cryptography and decryption algorithms. So, what do we need to prove? Uh, we need to uh, prove um, uh, two things. First, uh, that, uh, let's say that we have a number, uh, a positive integer, uh, greater than 1, every natural number, a natural number. as a prime factorization and uh, the second thing that we need to prove is that um, this prime factorization is um, uh, unique So um, let's uh, work on uh, part one. So suppose uh, not every uh, natural number uh, greater than one has a 
as a, um, a prime factorization. So we know the well ordering principle. Um, so obviously, uh, natural number is greater than one um, by the well ordering principle. Um, there's a non empty set, and uh, by this principle, it has the smallest, uh, there is the smallest uh, such uh, number. Uh, in other words, natural number greater than one uh, that does not have um, a uh, prime factorization. So uh, there exists the smallest uh, such number. The well-ordering principle, and you can watch uh, one of the previous screencasts on this channel about the well-ordering principle. Essentially, it states that uh, every uh, non-empty uh, set of uh, natural numbers uh, has a smallest element. Um, so, so by the well-ordering principle, there is a uh, there is such a number n, and n is not prime. Well, because if it were prime, then it would have itself as a, a prime uh, factorization. So it would, let's write it out, it would have itself, has its own unique um, uh, factorization. Okay, so, um, well, there are only two choices. If it's a natural number and it's not a prime number, then it must be a composite number. Uh, so, in other words, n is a product of two numbers that are necessarily um, uh, less than itself, uh, so greater than 1 but less than mm, uh, n. And uh, since n is the smallest, um, uh, by the well-ordering principle, the smallest number that does not have a prime factorization, but uh, a and b are smaller than n, uh, and they do have prime factorizations. So um, since a has a prime factorization and b has a prime factorization, so the we can put together out of those two prime factorizations, we can put together a unique a prime factorization for n which will consist of the prime factorization of A and a uh, prime factorization of B. Just basically have the product and then we can rearrange uh, the prime factors and the prime factorization uh, of N in any whichever way you want. But it will be a, uh, a prime factorization, which is important for this part of the proof. So we just proved that uh, N has a prime factorization. Now, uh, let's go to uh, number two. Uh, the prime factorization is unique. Uh, however, we have to, okay, uh, here's a side note on the proof technique. Uh, so we have to mm, do a uniqueness proof. And so suppose that um, we uh, want to show that some mathematical object A, so suppose we want to prove that some mathematical object A uh, is unique. Uh, so typically, uh, what uh, the way it is done um, is that we will assume the existence of another mathematical object B. Uh, some mathematical object B. Uh, what's an object here? Well, it's, it's a prime factorization in, in this case. But it can be any mathematical object that we want to show to be unique. Uh, so, uh, so we assume that another mathematical object B exists with the same properties as, um, mm, as A. And uh, then we show that A and B are identical. Well, that means that well, then we're allowed to conclude that A is unique because uh, uh, any other mathematical object uh, with the same properties will be identical to uh, B. So uh, let's remind ourselves uh, uh, of Euclid's uh, first theorem, which states that um, if um, P is um, a prime and uh, P divides a product of uh, AB, then um, P divides A or P divides B.
Okay, so <coughs> we're going to go back to our um, uh, number two, uh, part, part, uh, part number two of, of our proof of the unique factorization uh, theorem. We're going to assume that n has, um, mm, uh, uh, it's a natural number, right? Uh, uh, a number um, a greater than one uh, that um, has multiple uh, uh, prime factorizations. So two, two prime factorizations. Right? So let's parenthesize that and n has two uh, prime uh, factorizations. And let's assume for the sake of argument that they're different. But they are nonetheless, I mean, wha what, is, what is the same in terms of their properties? Uh, they're both uh, prime factorizations of n. So let's say the first prime factorization that consists of uh, some number of primes, p1 through p uh, pn, and that's the same as the second prime factorization because it's a prime factorization of the same number, so um, but let's assume for the sake of argument that it consists of um, uh, different uh, primes, some q1 through qm, and but they're both equal to n, right? Okay. So uh, let's take uh, the first uh, prime factor uh, in the prime factorization uh, of n, the first prime factorization f1. Then uh, by Euclid's first theorem, um, uh, p1 divides uh, since p1 divides f f2. Um, uh, divides n, it, it divides f2, um, the, prime the second prime factorization, and it either divides, uh, divides uh, q1 or it divides q2 through qn. Right? Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, well, uh, it means that, um, okay, let's write it out. Uh, it means that uh, p, since p is a p p1 is a prime number, it it's must be equal to some uh, qi, right, uh, where uh, that um, i is uh, less, uh, greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to n. So uh, we can actually rewrite uh, p2 as, uh, um, let me grab a different color, q1, then there will be uh, some p1. Well, uh, obviously p1 is uh, maybe equal to q1, but it will have uh, some place in the uh, 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 in, in F2, the second prime factorization. So, so P1 can be taken out by dividing uh, the first prime factorization uh, F1 by it and uh, uh, the second prime factorization uh, F2 by it. And so, and then we can do it recursively, repeatedly, or we can make a formal inductive argument that uh, will then we can going to go once uh, um, uh, P1 and uh, uh, P1 has been taken out. Uh, uh, so we have uh, f1 divided by p1 and f2 divided by p1, then we can go on to p2 and do the same. Uh, uh, because uh, p2 will divide f2 and can be taken out of both prime factorizations, eventually will be basically run out of primes, and that's how you 